Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Killer T right here on Killer T TV. Thank you for coming to celebrate with me, video 100. Um, this is going to be a two part video. So it's going to be this video is video 100, and then you got um, the two, the, the second part, which is going to be video 101. I want to thank y'all for, for being, um, for being fans, for being, um, for being with me, for staying with me, um, the, being faithful and, um, being faithful to my channel, subscribing to my channel, commenting on my channel, um, everything else, man. I appreciate everything, um, my long underground journey through music or whatever, my, you know, uh, my indie artist career, you know, um, the YouTube page been up for for a year, a year and a couple months now, um, I probably got over 50 something subscribers and just about the same in friends right here on YouTube. So um, look out for the video documentary, the 10, the 10 upload video documentary that's coming out. Um, that's going to be a no holds bar. Tell all about what's been going on through the underground scene right here in Champaign, Illinois, and also going on, you know, in the world. But anyway, um, something I want to talk about today is just basically my start in hip hop, my start in music. Um, I love music. Ever since I was a kid, uh, I was raised by my, my grandfather, um, and he's from the South. I'm from, um, I'm from Tennessee, so I listen to a lot of uh, Johnny Cash, Jimi Hendrix, um, man, just a lot, like, you know, a lot of blues, B.B. King, um, Johnny Taylor, uh, just a lot of blues, a lot of Aretha Franklin, um, Gladys Knight and the Pips, um, just everything, you know, I listen to everything, you know, um, um, and also, you know, I was raised, uh, coming up in the church, you know what I mean, so, um, you know, I just basically listen to a lot of stuff. Country music, Jimi Hendrix, Eric Clapton, the Rolling Stones. Um, I got a, I got a feel of everything, you know. So, uh, um, I, fell, I fell in love with music uh, when I started really doing reenactments and started beatboxing and breakdancing in the street when I was probably about five or six years old. So, I was in love with, with hip-hop, you know, with LL Cool J. Easy E, uh, EPMD, Run DMC, um, NWA, uh, all them guys. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it evolved from from the gangster music, you know, to the Master P and the Wu Tang days. You know, so I listen to a lot of music, and um, you know, I, I've I've done a lot of I've been in a lot of uh, you know dance crews, um, hip hop dance crews, and I've been in a lot of uh, rap battles and everything, but, you know, I, I, I fell in love with, with music real young, five or six years old. I was one of the kids with the with the big, huge boom boxes that was sitting on my shoulder with about 20 DC batteries in them, you know what I'm saying? And I had the big, the, uh, the, the big high tops and, and, you know what I'm saying, the tank tops, and I had the, you know, the break dancing gloves, you know, I was all into music, man, way back in the day. But, um, when I started my my hip hop career, really, you know, it it was something that I think all kids have done in high school. Man, they sat at the lunch table. You got one guy hitting the fork and the spoon, making the beat, and you got another guy beatboxing. And then you got you know guys that are surrounding each other that are, you know, what I'm saying doing you know doing little ciphers. You know, what I'm saying they do it in the lunchroom or they do it at gym or they do it after school behind the high school or whatever. So um, that's pretty much where. I started getting into music. I didn't really start taking it seriously till probably about two years ago, two or three years ago. That was about 2009, 2010. I really started uh, recording my own music. And uh, uh, what had happened was uh, I hooked up with uh, DJ Red um, at work. Um, guys in the back, you know, we kind of sit in the back of the break room and guys in there were, you know what I'm saying? Uh, saying a couple lines or they was rapping and I get in, I was rapping and he kind of pulled me to the side and was like, uh, man, you know, uh, you, you, you got some lyrics, man. You got some lyrics. Your delivery is a little this and a little that, you know, this needs work. This need work. So he kind of slid me his number 
And um, I had called him and and we just we just been clicking ever since. So um, him being from Kankakee and him having a background and him having a lot of people that he had knew, like the Merchant Boys, he's cousins to the Merchant Boys at the Kankakee, and he knows uh, Kuwan V, that's a big producer at the Kankakee, and he knew uh, he also knows Voodoo that uh, does music for Def Jam South. So um, kind of being close to him and him being my producer and me recording at his house was um, I got a I got a mixture of kind of messing with everybody because I knew the Merchant Boys through him and um, you know Red was official man you know he was official he knew Chuck D um, uh, he also knew Professor Griff you know he knew a lot of people just through music you know and uh, which is crazy so I kind of knew a lot of people by default through him so um, we started working together and he you know, started doing tracks and started mixing some stuff and he'll slide me a CD, tell me to go home and write some lyrics to it and write a hook. And me just being in the music, I really didn't, you know, I really didn't know the format of music. Yeah, I knew how to spit a 16, but I didn't really know how to put a hook together. Or I didn't know how to really, you know, really balance myself out as an artist. I was just developing. So, um, it was about the time Barack Obama had uh, had got um, was in office, and I came up with the idea that my first uh, my first um, mixtape should be called the inauguration. That's what I came up with the idea with that because you know first black president, my first mixtape, my first time coming out. So why not call it the uh, the inauguration mixtape? So we worked on that, and I think one of the hottest tracks on that uh mixtape was uh in my hood and uh i was born um that was that was actually uh that was actually a mix um a sample that my cousin um everybody out there know uh charles parish i double um he had actually um uh, sampled that track and put that track down he was another person that um had helped me through um, my early stages of my, you know, my underground career. Um, he came by and dropped off some um, some programs to me, and um, he was showing me um, the steps on how to record myself. I mean, after recording the inauguration mixtape with DJ Red, him being a family man, and me also having a family too, it was kind of hard for our uh, for our times to meet up to balance out. Like, you know, I would be off on Mondays, and he would be off on Tuesdays, and after work on Tuesdays, I'll stop by for a couple hours and, you know, try to record a song. But it was pretty hard. So I kind of wanted to go into uh, try to do my own home studio, you know, set up my own computer, get my own computer program, get my own mic, learn how to mix, um, learn how to do my double ups, learn how to do everything myself. Because uh, one thing is being a man, you got to you got to do what you got to do, you know, and um him working different shifts than I was working and and everything else, I really had to go in, you know, to business for myself and start recording myself. So I had a <laughs> funny thing about it, I had a halfway broken ass computer. It had all kind of viruses on it. I barely had any memory. Um, so um, he dropped off the Fruity Loops 8 and he also dropped off the, uh, the Sonar um, program and that's where I finished recording the inauguration mixtape um so kind of shortly after that um kind of about at the same time i came up with the uh the concept of killer ttv me and a um a co-worker of mine somebody i've been knowing for a very very long time uh huey black um came up with the concept of the free advertisement on youtube it's free you know all you need is a camera or you need is a you know a a, a camera or uh and a computer and you got free advertisement you know what I'm saying so we came up with the idea of using YouTube um, I came up with the idea of killer T TV and he also came up with his idea Huey black TV so um, with me trying to finish my um, finished my mixtape the inauguration mixtape um, not knowing that he used to do his uh, his music thing back in the day um, you know I was I was you know my mother had uh, married a 
you know, um, somebody that was in the uh, the armed forces. So we kind of moved and flip flopped around. So um, I was I think I was living in uh, living in Memphis at the time. And then when I came back, when he was recording the music, um, and they had actually had a uh, a group. Um, they was called Black Pain, you know, Pain as in Champagne, you know what I'm saying? It was a group of him, AK Dre, and some other guys that had came up with this group, not knowing this, you know what I mean? Because I was I was gone away from Champagne for a while. Um, and when I got done with the mixtape, and he had, you know, heard me, you know, spit a couple lines that I had wrote off, uh, wrote off my mixtape at work, and he had talked to one of his guys, and they wanted to kind of sign me to grade a records um which was cool you know we was down and um we started to uh record my debut album attacked by many defeated by none um we started recording that album and um at the same time when i was recording that album i was getting a lot of hype i'm um, not like a lot of hype like i was like number one in champagne everybody was you know trying to work with me but um at the same time, I was getting a lot of calls from a lot of producers. Um, Ravion, you know, Ravion, uh, Ravion Reed, um, he's worked with Twick, he's worked with Cam Morris, he's worked with Jay Moses. Um, if you guys are real familiar with everybody out there in Champaign, um, he had called me and he was like sending me snippets of tracks that he had made. He really wanted to work with me. And um, funny thing about it, kind of like at the same time when I was doing the Killer TTV, I was running around doing a lot of interviews with a lot of indie and underground artists out of Champagne. So um, before I had really talked to Ravion, I had I had ran into Jay Moses and I had did an interview with him. And Ravion was kind of telling Jay, like, uh, man, you know, uh, KT, man, he he looked like he could be. He could be like a, a a manager for you. You need that. You need him to look like you know because after the after the uh, the inauguration mixtape when uh, Huey Black followed me with the cameras, man, I went all over Champagne. I had like over 300, 300 uh, uh burned copies of my inauguration album, and I was just handing it out for free. And I think um, that's where the buzz started from. They was like, man, you know, this guy, you know. Killer T, this guy KT, man, he really on his grind. He really out there, like, really trying to sell himself. You know what I'm saying? He's really trying to advertise himself. He's really going into the streets. He's going all over. You know, I went to uh, Scully's Chicken and Fish. I went to JJ's, JJ's Fish. I was all over handing my uh, my mixtape out. So the buzz kind of started like, like I was a hustler. You know, like I was really out there, like trying to hustle and trying to get my make a name for myself. Um, so I started getting a lot of, you know, I started getting a lot of calls. I started getting a lot of text messages. A lot of people started hitting me on my Reverb Nation. Um, and, you know, a lot of stuff started to start to really buzz. And another thing that really had happened in the midst, in the course of all this is that, um, Hot 105.5, um, DJ um, Suave was throwing this thing at TK Windows, and everybody know what TK Windows is. That's from Champagne, and he was going out, you know, the Hot Squad or whatever was going out to, to TK Windows, and uh, I took a copy of my mixtape up there, and I had handed it to him. You know, I had to kind of dig through the crowd, had to get get at him, and you know, I talked to him for about five minutes. We sat there, and we talked. And I handed him my mixtape and I said, look, I want to see, you know, it's, it's radio ready. I want to see if you could play it. What could you do for me? And he told me that he could, you know, he could play it for me um, the following Thursday because they do the hometown heat on Thursday. Um, I had everybody, you know, amped up. I did a little something right here on YouTube and I did a video talking about, you know, my video was, good, you know, my, my, my song was going to be played, Hot 105.5. Thursday night, hometown heat, everybody tune in, blase, blase, blase. Come to find out he didn't play it. He didn't play my track. He played a couple other people's track that was from Decatur. And he also played one of his. So um, the next day I got on the phone, I called up there, and I was trying to trying to get at him. I was trying to talk to him, like, you know, what happened or whatnot. No calls were returned. He didn't answer my calls. Um, nothing, you know. And, you know, I was I was kind of... I was kind of, I was 